Coming up on today's episode of Airboard, the FAA proposes Dreamliner's airworthiness directive. Warflight adds new feature on Black Friday, and Red Bull Air Races are back in 2015. Welcome to Airboard on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The FAA has proposed an airworthiness directive for Boeing's 7878 Dreamliner after reports of numerous failures of the proximity sensor within the slat skew detection mechanism assembly, referred to as the DMA. The slats are a component of the leading edge devices that allow a lower approach and landing speed. The proposed AD would require replacing the slat skew DMAs with new units and revising identification plates on the new part. The FAA is proposing this AD to prevent failure of the proximity sensor, which could result in the slats being inoperative. If the slats are not operative, the higher approach and landing speeds require additional runway, which could lead to special considerations at airports with limited runway leaks and also in certain emergency situations. It's reported that Boeing is supporting the proposed rule. In March, it recommended that the mechanism be applied on all 132 7878s in service worldwide. About a third have already been retrofitted, according to Boeing. The new ForeFlight Mobile 6.5 version unveils what the company says are two firsts in mobile flight planning capabilities that advance pre-flight weather briefings in two areas. These are flight condition monitoring and NOTAMs. ForeFlight says they are on a mission to make its users more aware of changing conditions that affect your flight. When a significant change is detected, a notification is sent to all of a subscriber's devices enabled by Sync containing a summary and detailed description of the condition. The new NOTAM advisor proactively alerts subscribers to any notices that affect the instrument procedure or airport location you're viewing. In addition, 6.5 includes optimization for iFold 6 and 6 Plus. Auto Show Taxi is expanded to the map view. Improvements to the Stratus platform ensure the integrity of secure communications between the Stratus 2 and 4 Flight Mobile. Improvements to airport service information and new helper messages to make filing flight plans easier. After the break, Red Bull Air Racing 2015 is all set to go. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airboard, Aero TV, our website, or a podcast, drop an email to jim at aero-news.net. Red Bull announced that the Red Bull Air Race World Championship season in 2015 will feature eight stops spanning the globe that include five of the most popular locations for the 2014 season. The Sports 8 season kicks off with a traditional opener at Abu Dhabi and will include first ever races in Japan in the city of Chiba. The championship then moves to another country, Russia, with a stop in Sochi and Budapest, Hungary, which hosted seven races between 2003 and 2009, is back on the calendar. The second half of the 2015 Red Bull Air Race Championship season starts in Ascot, Great Britain, before it makes a return to Spielberg, Austria. The 2015 season concludes with two stops in the United States, which are Fort Worth, Texas, followed by the season finale in Las Vegas, Nevada. Red Bull's Eric Wolf said in part, quote, We're always making efforts to bring the sport to our fans, and we're delighted that we can now officially announce that Red Bull Air Race will visit two new countries in 2015. Each week, we share with you a sample of an online video one of our viewers found especially entertaining. We call it our Aero Video of the Week. Final lift off. 
In this video, you get to join with the RV Golden Knights as they skydive into the stadium at night, illuminated by pyrotechnics. Search The Jumper's Point of View on YouTube. Sea turtles are in trouble and general aviation can help. There is an immediate need to fly sea turtles that have stranded themselves on the East Coast. More than 150 endangered turtles are experiencing a state of emergency due to recent cold temperatures and strong onshore winds in the Northeast. A nonprofit New England aquarium is working to stabilize as many sea turtles as possible, but lacks resources to house the unprecedented number. There is immediate need to fly sea turtles to other facilities, including the Georgia Sea Turtle Center, the South Carolina Aquarium, and other facilities in Florida and North Carolina. The Archie Carr Center for Sea Turtle Research is appealing to all pilots and aircraft owners for help. Leslie Weinstein with the center and also the owner of the aviation fastener company TrueLock LLC said in part, quote, As an aviation company, this is one of our programs showcasing the importance of general aviation to communities, end quote. After these messages, you did vying to represent Delta pilots. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. There's a bit of a power struggle between unions and Delta Airlines. Alpa has represented Delta pilots since 1940. However, the Delta Pilots Association, known as DPA, which was created in 2010, would like to become the bargaining body for Delta's pilots. DPA says that it has collected cards backing its efforts from nearly half of the 12,000 pilots that fly for Delta. But according to reports, U.S. labor laws make about a third of these invalid because they were not signed in the past 12 months. To become the pilot's collective bargaining unit, the DPA would need cards signed by more than 50% of the members in a one-year period, which would trigger an election through the National Mediation Board. The DPA's organizers say that they are fighting apathy on the part of the rank and file, but with a contract coming up, they say the time is right. The International Space Station's 3D printer has manufactured the first 3D printed object in space paving the way for future long-term space expeditions. Maiden Space Engineers commanded the printer to make the first object while working with controllers at NASA's Payload Operations Integration Center in Huntsville. The majority of the printing process is controlled from the ground to limit crew time required for operations. Tests were run to verify and calibrate the printer's operation prior to making the first part on November 24th. Controllers sent the printer the command to make the first printed part a component for itself to demonstrate that the printer can make its own replacement parts. The first object built in space will be returned to Earth in 2015 for detailed analysis and comparison to identical ground control samples made on the flight printer prior to launch. The goal of the analysis is to verify that the 3D printing process works the same in microgravity as it does on Earth. The Society of Aviation and Flight Educators, referred to as SAFE, has announced that Executive Director Doug Stewart will retire when his contract expires in February 2015. Stewart was instrumental in the formation of SAFE. He was elected as SAFE's first chair in 2009, transitioning into the role of Executive Director in November 2011. SAFE's current Board of Directors Chair Donna Wilt said, quote, 
It's due in large part to Doug Stewart's vision and commitment to excellence in aviation education that SAFE is well positioned for growth in the coming years, end quote. Stewart commented, quote, I fully expect to remain connected to all the wonderful people who have been involved with and supported SAFE over the last five and a half years. I also intend to remain active as a flight instructor and active in SAFE, end quote. Former board chair John Dorsey has accepted the position of interim executive director until the new executive director is in place. Well, that's our program for Monday, December 1st. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. You can join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoon for a new edition of Airborne. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.